Testing. Testing. Hi, everybody. I'm Liron Cohen. And I'm Mimi Torchin. And we are Lady Parts TV. And I think by now you know what it means when we're sitting here later in the day. Mm -hmm. It means we're about to talk to somebody really extra cool. Very exciting. And oftentimes, as is the case today, that somebody happens to be on the other end of the universe in Australia. And this is an interview we've been wanting to do for how, how long now? How long has Wentworth been on? Exactly. <laughs> We are going to talk with the fabulous Jackie Brennan, aka Smiles, Smiles, or Miss Linda, Linda Miles. Miles. And I think we have so much to talk about. We have so many questions to ask. Um, it, this is such great timing, right before the new season, the final season starts, right? So uh, we're so excited that we, we can are. bring you this conversation. One of the original, one of the four. very few originals. Yes. Here she is. Jackie Brennan. Hello. Hello there. Oh, howdy, finally. It's one, I can't believe it. It's been years since we've been trying to set this up. I know. So I went, oh, dang it. This is, thing's nearly over. Let's yeah. do it. Good for you. That's, that's what the much. hell? I mean, really, <laughs> it's the final season. We've, it, it, I mean, I know that we've only been kind of courting you for five years or so, but really, we've been <laughs> wanting to talk to you since the first season. Wow. How are you doing, first of all? Really good. We're in lockdown right. again. Lockdowns yes. here are pretty full on. Um, curfew. Uh, we can only shop for food. Uh, we can walk for an hour or two, I think. But look, I live in a beautiful place. Yes. A, it's too cold to use the pool, but it's pretty. Um, kids are homeschooling and uni schooling, but we're okay. What do you and miss? And you have lots of movies, did you say? No, Dan Murphy's. It's the um, the alcohol shop down the road. <laughs> <laughs> Got Let's it. Let's not forget the essentials. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Good food wine. Yeah. Well, what, uh, I, I'm, I'm glad you have Dan Murphy's, but you must be missing something um, from lockdown. I'm what do you miss the most? I'm very social, so I'm missing all my buddies a lot. Um, and just the... You know, art galleries and going to the theatre and yeah, culture. Um, yeah, it's amazing how much you miss it. But oh, yes. after the, the big lockdown when we went to the art gallery, I walked in and burst into tears. Mm. You know, you just—it's amazing how you feel robbed of that. Well, absolutely. We we live in New York and we've been on Martha's Vineyard, tiny little Martha's Vineyard, uh, since eighteen uh, months now. Eighteen months. And I've barely seen the outside of my property. <laughs> really? Really? Yeah. So is it locked down there? Like, are the shops it, open? They're no. open. It's our own. Uh, it, it's the thing about America is they they don't do lockdowns really, like, except for New York. New York did lockdowns. Otherwise, they they much they care much more about personal freedom. Every man about, for himself. Yeah, it's a it's right. a whole different mentality. So yes, well, yes. we just had protesters yesterday. Idiots. Um, is is there an end in sight though, or? Is it an Speaking ongoing it. thing? Is there an end in sight to the lockdown or just? Yeah, I think so. I think so. we just got to keep getting vaccinated. How's that you going? Know, Is that right? At 70% they'll open up again. Yeah. And here our numbers are only 61, So, or they were yesterday. So Perfect. we locked down very quickly. Very quickly. Well, that's the way to do it before you reach yeah. the numbers we got. We have, well, you know, 50 states of people just doing whatever whatever they want whatever they want yeah. has it changed obviously it's already obviously changed since biden got in no oh. well <laughs> but, i mean it changed in so far as he got you know shots in arms yeah. of the people who would get them he does what he can what but he, uh, the governors of the various states, states i mean there are there are governors who actually are forbidding people from wearing masks <laughs> They're forbidding them. Yes, it's crazy. There are places who won't serve you if you wear a mask. Yeah. If you wear a mask, yes. they won't serve you? <laughs> Welcome sure. to America. Uh, <laughs> oh, don't worry, we've got some of those here. <laughs> anyway, though, let's talk about television. television. Sorry? Television. Thank God for television. You're Thank not God kidding. Thank God for television. That's, I think that's been keeping everybody alive, really. Yeah. 
And and by the way, I know, I, we were kind of going to ask that at some point, and I know you can't say anything about the new season. We don't expect you to, but I'm curious because you did shoot it under lockdown, right? Very much so, yes. And Very then, strict. One of how, our strictest lockdowns. And how did that affect i mean did it change any storylines did the constraint mean that you had to do things very differently what what was that like we when we when we had to stop filming during eight at the end of 8a we had a meeting about not making wentworth light so we didn't want to have to compromise you know fights and love scenes and just close proximity because the whole thing is it's this sort of Class close of environment so uh, we came to an agreement that the actors could pretty much do what they wanted to do on set. Um, all the crew had special passes where they could only go certain areas. We could no longer all have lunch together, um, which was really sad because that's sort of part of the family of Wentworth. Um, there were so many restrictions. I'm just trying to remember them all. Makeup. Um, Everyone was wearing masks. Everyone was full PE. Wow. Um, Did you have to get uh, swabbed every day? Beg your pardon? Did you have to get swabbed every day? Uh, Swabbed once a week. Um, Yeah, the actors had a – we spent most of our time in our little area, so we we weren't walking around. We actually survived without anybody getting COVID, as far as I know. It's amazing. That is amazing. I know. Um. And the other thing was the curfew. So we'd be doing night shoots and, wow, it's very noisy. All of a yes, the you airplane. hear airplanes. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, yeah, well, I got pulled over after a night shoot, quite filthy. Um, I won't go into too much yeah. too specifics, but, um, yeah, I got pulled over half an hour, about 10 minutes from my home and I had to show my papers. It was so dystopian. Wow. Did you have uh, special passes to be out after curfew? Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And even now with our lockdown, if um, we're, we've got jobs on, we've got to have papers showing why we're outside of our five kilometres. And so you didn't, they didn't have to change any storylines or make any kind of like big adjustments. They just actually adjusted everything to fit so they could kind of serve the, view, the vision? They did. They certainly cut down extras. Mm. Which um, I hope I, I actually I'm not I'm saved it to watch. I'm starting today. I haven't seen it yet. Oh, you got um, you want to watch it with us, huh? Beg your pardon. You want to watch it with us? <laughs> yeah, I pretty much want to watch it with the viewing public. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, where was I? Help me. Uh, extras. Yes, not so many extras. extras. And often they had also had um, same same sex couples, so that they didn't have people who didn't know each other or from different areas. So you'll find that there are actual couples in the extras. Oh, oh. you mean couples in real life? In real life. Oh, I love it. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I do too. So we've really found a, a way to make it work. Very original. We were still, we were still a family. We were just a bit um, dis, dis, um, disjointed. Dis- <laughs> discombobulated. <laughs> Definitely discombobulated. Um, but yeah, I just couldn't believe we made it to the end. We just made it, and we were exhausted. I can imagine. Well, you. Were. Uh, I, I actually think I had a bit of PTSD afterwards. I was, I, I couldn't do anything for like at least a month. I was just in shock. Is that because of the content of what you were shooting, or because of the way you were shooting? A little bit from column A, a little bit from column B. <laughs> well, we well. actually have a question about that. Yeah, well, it's an exhausting yeah. show anyway. So uh, yeah. I do have a question about that because, um, especially because of the storyline that Miss Miles is going through where we stopped anyway. But before we get to that, let's first of all, we have to tell you, we, we have a lot of questions because with, with Smiles, as we call her, um, you know, we don't know more than we do know. <laughs> yeah. Which is not a lot. Yeah. And this is why we've been dying to talk to you, especially because we we want you to fill in the blanks. So, first of all, because she's, <laughs> she's a, you know she's a very big presence. I mean, even though there's not a lot uh, heavy duty scenes, although you've had quite a few, uh, her presence is felt and well, has been felt because, since the beginning. Especially because you carry yes throughout the season, you're the one who carries the consistent you know snarky remarks and. Yes. <laughs> So when did you first realize that Miss Miles was going to give you the forever nickname Smiles? 
Um, when when did I realize that the name, the nickname? Yeah, yeah. yeah because I mean, I mean, we that's started all calling we ever call you is smiles. Yeah, and, and it seems that everybody caught on to that immediately. It wasn't like something that somebody had to all of a sudden say, "Hey, you know, did you notice?" No, it was just Miss Miles. Always, always, it was always smiles, and it just fit the person well. Not yeah. notwithstanding the last season, but it always fit your personality. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was actually because she didn't smile. So it was series one. It was Nicole De Silva. And I, I made a decision very early on. We had um, an ex-prison guard come and talk to us about, you know, being a prison guard. And the way he was, he, he wasn't very nice when he talked about them. And I just, I thought, and everyone else was friends with the prisoners. I thought there's got to be someone who actually doesn't really like these people and who thinks that their status is much higher than theirs. So I just made the decision that she didn't really like any of them. And, you know, this was just a job. Um, and so I opened a lot of doors in Series 1, but I always made sure there was something going on. In in my head I had to hold yes. I, so much for her that, you know, what maybe she lost that morning, um, you know, at the pokies or on the on the horses. So it was really shitty that day. Um, so Nicole De Silva, we were in a scene in the governor's office and, yeah, Nick just decided to start calling me Smiles and that stuck. So it was Nicole. <laughs> that was Nicole De Silva. So that she can take that one. Well, I mean, whenever, you, whenever they call you Miss Smiles, it just goes together, Smiles, Miss Smiles. Smile. So yeah. <laughs> it just seemed but natural. Never because she was smiley because she, yeah, certainly, she wasn't. certainly wasn't. Well, were there ever any times when uh, in your head when you were opening a door something good had just happened to Miss Smiles that, and then, or was it always bad? <laughs> um, actually, no, in Series 1, yes, because she was a bit more of a party girl in Series 1. So there were, you know, hangovers I could bring in. <laughs> um, and a friendship with Vera. She was a bit more sarky, sort of a bit more out there. She she sort of spiralled downwards once the gambling came in. There was no mention of gambling in Series 1. Um, at the beginning of Series 2, one of the writers took me aside and said, we've decided to give her a gambling problem and, you know, here's some research on gambling and Yes, I was always so anything anything that was given to me, I'd go yes, finally yes, so I could grab onto something right. because otherwise it was literally Jackie just yeah in your head playing. yeah. So I I wasn't turning up to work with just turning up to work. I loved writing a whole life and history for her. But once the writers caught up, it made it a lot easier. Well, and certainly that's what we always say. That I don't know yeah. how early on you started watching Talking Teal, but we always say that you got so little to do, and, and you, you did, did so, so much, much with, with it. it that that was so, it was uh, admirable. So we were very interested in the kind of backstory that you uh, created. Here's your for chance her. to tell everybody, tell everybody what <laughs> uh, what you wrote, who Miss Miles really really is. is. I think even back to the. Like when I'd just get the odd line and I'd go, oh, that's gold. The Mr. Whippy line, I was like, yes, that's so good. But doing when you only have that line, when when Jess says Doreen wants an ice cream and Smile says, I'll just call Mr. Whippy, that's <laughs> got to come. It can't come from a place. Has to land. It's got to come from a, oh, my God, you are all such dickheads as if I'm going to get you a freaking ice cream. <laughs> Me you know, thing, and even the Jamie Oliver line with um with Ferguson, you know, did the prisoners make this? You know, that's another for fuck's sake, no Jamie Oliver. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'd always have to find, you know, find where everything came from, and and also I loved when the gambling came in, the stakes of that that by trading information from cash, her job was on the line. And by that stage, that job it was everything because she was starting to, you know, owe money. So without that job, and also I'd written a backstory for her where she had been a teacher, she'd been married, um, uh, the gambling got worse and worse, they lost their house, the relationship split up, she got sacked from her job, um, and then... and. Prison guards are actually quite well paid in this country, hmm. um, and you'll often find people 
who have been in jobs that aren't very well paid becoming prison guards. Hello, pussycat. Um, She's very busy. She goes from winner to winner to winner to look There's at a lot going on here in the country. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Um, for her. For her? But for her. I mean, animals, critters, <laughs> and birds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so... Where was I? So you she took the so job she, because it because was a well-paid job. It was a well-paid she, job. Yeah. This so, was after the addiction. Yes. So, and uh, gradually, um, and but it would go away every so often, which was really frustrating. I can't remember which series. Was it series three where I could? there was no mention of her gambling? It was one of the series where it sort of disappeared. It's hard after nine series to remember which series <laughs> you know, it is. We have a lot of viewers who, before every series start, they go back and watch, they watch the, the entire whole thing. Season. We're not <clears throat> all, seasons, all seasons. All seasons. All of them. All, seasons. all of them, beginning to end, every year. Not us. Not us. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> so we yeah. probably remember as much as you do. But uh, no, but I've, I've noticed that too, that sometimes it would just, I mean, I'm assuming that it's still going on in the background, but they just don't mention it. Yes, yeah. And I think that was sometimes the hardest thing is. <clears throat> Because I'm supporting cast, I'll do that, supporting cast, um, <laughs> I, you know, never getting that satisfaction of um, the back, you, the viewers and me seeing the backstory. Mm -hmm. I always found that quite frustrating um, <clears throat> and I couldn't sort of fight for more. Um, so did I you did try? Some, yeah, I did, yeah. And um, would, you, would you care to tell us how, what what? what their reaction was or why? Look, it was more um, every series I would try or as the series went on I would try for main cast and it'd be, I think unless I was prepared to lose the job, sorry, unless I was prepared for it to go and I wasn't, I didn't want to lose it. I loved it so much. So I just wasn't prepared to go that far. Like threaten to leave? Katrina did, yeah. Who did that? Uh, Katrina did, really? Katrina. Yeah. So for Katrina, she could not go on as a supporting cast member. She just, it just, it just it was ate wrong. away at her. Um, but, you know, for me it was, I just love doing it so much. And, yeah, I I wasn't prepared to go to that stage where I was ready for it all to go, to, to be the end of it, you know, and also practically... I have a family, I have a house, I have my husband's also an actor, so this is our life. Like, it's a great you know, gig. There is nothing else. Mm -hmm. So if I lost that, I was like, oh god, then I'm back out there trying to get the next gig and I like this one. Yeah. So, so I just made made you know, made the most of, of what I was given. And it was always grateful when something juicy came along. Series seven for me was the juiciest. I think that certainly we've seen the role grow and become having more substance as time went on. And certainly, I mean, I, I would think that Wentworth people would know that you were a fan favorite. Fans I mean, love you. There was, you can't imagine Wentworth without, again, your snarky remarks. And, and, and I mean, this, this season was actually very different from Miss Miles and, and we'll want to mm. talk about it. But, but before we do, since you mentioned Boomer, did we hear a rumor that you actually read for the Boomer role originally? Uh no, no. I read for Liz, actually. Really? Uh, oh. Yes. I just huh. knew. Even then I was like, this is so not me. No, I don't think <laughs> so. I um, often do a lot of reading work, which is, you would know, um, reading opposite actors when they're auditioning for roles. And I read opposite Katrina, who I've known for oh, 20 years. I've known Katrina a long time. And that role was tiny, but there was this bit where she, she was brilliant, of course. There was this bit where she yelled and Oh my god! Like my ear is still ringing. <laughs> but, um, she was brilliant. There was no doubt that that you know that this wasn't going to be her role. Um, but yeah, I, I really enjoy doing that. You learn a lot reading opposite other actors. Mm -hmm. So how did you come to audition for Miss Miles? I didn't audition for Miss Miles. So I was in that room with Kev Carlin, the director who I've also known, I've known Kev since he directed me in a series called Bull Pit in 19, uh, 1989 or something. You must have started when you were around three years old. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, child, you know, child star. You were about three years old then. <laughs> <laughs> so I've known Kev a long time. So I was in the room with him reading and he said, there's this, and Ian and I just bought this house and he said, there's this really small role 
Um, and also I lo- he knew how much I loved the whole idea of the reimagining of prisoner. Mm-hmm. And he said, this is really small role. She's a prison officer. You know, I know you've just bought a house, you know, and I'd really like to, you know, you know, you to do it if you're available. And I came home and I went, why not? I've got nothing on at the moment. I've got nothing to lose. I think they offered me um, a guaranteed eight days. And obviously eight, eight years later, I was still there. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, now, you yeah, said so, uh, the gambling, when they introduced the gambling, so... In your head, I don't know if the backstory matched the backstory you made up matched with the with the gambling. But in your head, is is she just is it all about the gambling, or is she really just this tough chick who thinks she's above them, wants to take their money because why not, or does she have all these other morals and values that she's lost along the way because of her addiction? Um, she definitely lost her swag. So in series one, she had the swag. As the gambling, I think, obviously started to spiral downwards, I think all morals went out the window. Um, I think friendships went out the window. Um, I Even when we were filming in a car, I asked Paris, our standby props, to make sure that it looked like she lived in her car half the time. Wow. The, only, the only thing that didn't work was... I imagine that she had her clothes in the car and would sometimes get ready for work, like be at the pokies till four in the morning and, and then get ready and go. But her uniforms were always nicely ironed. <laughs> Damn, your, your wardrobe work. department was too good. <laughs> I know. They could help um, so to have stayed in that job for as long as she did, I had to believe that there was nothing else, mm-hmm. that this just became, this was it, this was it. And then it's kind of a cycle uh, because yeah, she, so they I mean, kept you alive. Yes. Yeah. No, but I mean, it's kind of a cycle in terms of uh, probably her state of mind because to do this kind of work, it's kind of feeding into the lack of self worth and this negative, you know, look, outlook on life and things. I mean, I would imagine. And then, and then the violence and um, that yeah. that was a whole different. Well, I'm sure we'll get to that. The mm-hmm. PTSD that that was really hard well do you want to get there now let's get there let's now, get there now. Why not? <laughs> well, go with have, the flow we have our own opinions <laughs> of the ptsd story or, or how how they actually manifested it but um i read somewhere where you said that it it's very hard to shoot the show because your body doesn't know that you're pretending mm, so absolutely. and that especially sorry especially in the context of the ptsd story i was wondering how how did that feel or what kind of parallels you had there? Um, well, I suppose it even goes back to um, when she had the shiv. That was one of the hardest days when I had the shiv at my neck during the kangaroo court um, mm-hmm. with the freak. That that was two days. Two and days. After that, and you think you're fine, but then when they call cut, my whole body started to shake and I had to take myself off set and just have a bit of a weep. Um, And that whole, the siege with the gun at at my head and that was awful. We were all very um, disturbed by that. And I think also in a way because it was a male guard, you know, standing uh, over this group of women that were all very vulnerable, including the guards, that was a pretty hard day at work, um, and there've been there. I would say there have probably been quite a few times where I've had a good cry on the way home. I had about an hour drive from home set. Um, you know, it's yeah. even though we know it's acting and we know it, you know we're telling a story. Your, your body still goes into shock. Your body still goes there. So yeah, there are many days I would think. Comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a good sitcom. I was going to ask if, if, you, yeah. if you felt that it was generally acting or if Wentworth was especially hard to shoot because of the realism of it or because of how committed everybody is to making it feel real or, or is it just you would feel that way on any show getting into what you're doing? Um, I think Wentworth is unique in the sense it's where in that building the whole time. 
-hmm. So it's not like a lot of shows where you suddenly go back to, you know, uh, the makeup truck or wardrobe change and the you're transported to the next location. Uh, in Wentworth, we're in this massive cold building and we're all in close and all experiencing each other's emotions like right there. Whereas I did a show after Series 7 called Informa 3838, which was um, about a gangland killing <clears throat> of two actual people. Um, and literally in that show I had a gun at my head and was begging for my life. I was like, huh. I was known as a comic actor. How does this <laughs> <laughs> but that one, literally, oh, my whole body went into shock again. That was that was awful. And the director kept rolling and rolling. Jeff Bennett, who also directed Wentworth, he just wanted us to go there. So we were, like, literally begging for our lives, and that was really tough. So I think to... Um, I think as an actor you'll always go there, but I think Wentworth is definitely unique in that way. It's like a pressure cooker. Yes, beautiful that, analogy. That, that's how that I could... envision the way you describe it. It's like being in a pressure cooker. So so those little cries you have on the way home, that sort of lets off some of the steam. Do you have any other coping mechanisms? What do you do to sort of decompress after all of that? Uh, a good therapist. That pressure cooking. <laughs> You know, glass of wine. Um, cooking is my thing. I will come home and no matter, even if I'm home at 8 o'clock at night or whatever, I'll still cook. That's my relaxation. Mm -hmm. It's my creativity. It takes me away from everything. Put on some music, pour a glass of red wine and cook. I bet your family's pretty happy about that. What's your favourite What's your wait, favorite wait, wait. cuisine? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, no. We have some questions later. On. All right, we have food questions <laughs> oh, for you. I forgot. I they're, they're, well, they're, 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 they're special, so yes. we'll wait for those. I, yeah, I was jumping the gun. I forgot. <laughs> You'll see. Um, I also read somewhere that you said you made a conscious decision that smiles was not going to change. Yeah, she just, right. Well, uh, is it only yeah. about the smiling? Because it does sound like, you know, new information was introduced, like with the gambling, and then maybe she lives in her car semi or, you know. So what, what exactly did you mean by that when you said that you made a conscious decision that she would not change? Most series you'd see people, with, you know, the hair would slightly change or their, <clears throat> and mine would, but I just... I never wanted, I didn't want her to evolve out of there. I wanted it to just, that she was just always walking the same corridors. Um, you know, you'd see Dan with the different sort of mm -hmm. or top dog hair or I wanted there to be some sort of sense of whoever comes and goes, smiles is always there. She'll, all, she'll pretty much always, apart from when the PTSD came in, but she would always always pretty much react to a new prisoner in the same way over all nine seasons when they arrived, you know, behind those um, uh, prison doors. I can't think of this one. And why did you make that? Um, why did you want her to be static? Was it part of her just being a tragic character who never gets to spread her wings or was that to maintain kind of the cohesive nature of the show no matter what happened? I think it's that. I think it's the latter. I, I just like that it was always the same. I, I'm probably not explaining it very well, but that she's almost the underbelly there. She's all, always just this presence and she can go anywhere, no matter what series happened. She can go anywhere in that prison. You know, she can walk walk with all the officers and governors and then be in um, the slot or be in um the dining room she could be in the cells she could she's just almost like a rat you know she just would oh, oh, no, rat is, isn't even right but it's almost like a snake she could just slither anywhere you know you'd be doing something and smiles would just appear i, don't know. <laughs> I kind of like the rat analogy <laughs> yeah yeah. That's interesting yeah. because you're talking about, um, you know, Miss Miles being kind of the constant, but the show has seen a lot of change and you, you are one of the original yes. four. What, you're an what, anchor. What kind of changes have you seen when Ruth goes through that really, you know, kind of either meant a lot to you as an actor or as a character through the years? I think from a, an actor's point of view, just the level of um, 
uh, acting talent that would walk through those doors was, you know, you just be at the read throughs going, oh my God, this is so exciting. <laughs> um, you know, and there was, and I can pretty much say there was never a day that I wasn't happy to be there. You know, I would look around and go, look at look at who I'm working with. Yeah. Um, all the directors I got to work with, like extraordinary directors. Um, the scripts, they're every two weeks when that script would come to my inbox or, it, you know, early on when they deliver the scripts, I still miss that, um, I everything would stop. I couldn't speak to anyone in the family, you know, I couldn't walk the dog. I just go, I've just got to read, read it. And I wasn't just reading it to go, oh, what happens to me? What happens to me? <laughs> I was so excited to see what was going to happen next. And how often do you get that as an actor in your life? Scripts of this quality. Caliber, yeah. Um, so just thinking about change as well. What else? Oh, just while well, moving, we moved. Yeah. Prisons. Uh, which was a bit of a bugger for me because it used to be 15 minutes down the road. <laughs> I used to be able to shoot a scene in the morning, come home and have a swim, don't get my hair wet, don't get my makeup wet. <laughs> wow go back and do the scene in the afternoon. So it was so good. But once we moved to Newport, it was about an hour drive. Mm. Um, and also, yeah, all the new sets that would be built. And that was a great thing about Newport. You'd walk past what was an empty room and go, oh, they're building a set. What's going to happen? <laughs> and it would be, you know, somebody's office or oh, some, another Some cell. place where Ferguson cut somebody's tongue, tongue out. out. <laughs> well, there's that. And that's a day on set I'll never forget. Oh, yeah. Please tell, tell us about it. Oh, that was horrific. I think Robbie actually vomited that day. Really? Um, oh, it was disgusting. The makeup was so good. It and was so realistic. It was pretty bad to watch. Yes. Oh, when Sally Ann, just Juicy Lucy, staggered onto set and I hadn't seen her with the whole, it was just like, oh, no. Well, all our uh, uh, reactions are, are genuine. Wow. And it was also the tongue in the box. And the ah! makeup team would love showing us stuff. You know, they'd often be, you know, be having your coffee and your croissant or something and there'd be, you'd look over and there's an arm with a needle sticking out of it. It's like, <laughs> oh, God. You'd be having lunch opposite somebody and there'd be a bullet wound with sort of some, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like the walking dead. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't talk about zombies. I hate zombies. Uh, <laughs> I literally have a fear of zombies. Oh, well, they'll watch fear The Walking, the walking Dead. Dead. Ever. They made a show yeah. about <laughs> So what has been your, your favourite storyline for Miles so far? I mean, so far, from what you can tell us, because we don't know what happens next season. Um, up to this to 8A, um, I would still say Series 7 when it started to spiral downwards for her. I loved seeing her vul vulnerability. So did we. we. We did too, yes. It was so nice to be able to play, you know, play that and play with that. Play a range uh, of emotion. Yes. So that for me, up to eight, end of 8A, that has definitely been my favourite storyline. I just loved seeing the stakes so high for her and, you know, this was she was, she was in deep trouble. And, and what did you feel about the PTSD storyline or what they did with it? Oh, I really struggled with that, I, especially in the early days. Um, they didn't tell me that we would investigate it at all. So what happened was when we were shooting that scene with Reb in the, the strip search scene. Yeah, that was rough. And mm. that was really, really rough. And it was also Zoe's, I think that was Zoe's, their first day of shooting. Um and afterwards, um, Kev said, oh, you know, we just need you to add something to this scene. Oh, you know, after we'd shot that scene, he said, oh, um, they were looking at rushes or something. He said, can you just add something and when then, you know, we can fix it and post later. So I got to see it and I walked outside and burst into tears. I was so upset. Um, and he came up to me and said, what's wrong? I said, I just can't, I can't see her like that. You know, it was really hard. Um just so violent and I'm such a not a, you know not that anybody would admit to being violent I guess but I'm not I'm such a gentle soul and I, I really struggled seeing her like that so I ended up going to Marcia <clears throat> a writer and head writer and um having a meeting and she said oh no it's you know in a couple of episodes um we see her have 
you know, her PTSD moments, you actually see where it's coming from. And but I still, I still wish it had been we'd investigated it further to to, to reach those levels of violence. Uh, I'd like to have investigated that more, but you know, there's a lot of they write for a lot of people and yeah. a lot of characters. So, well, well, it was I shocking. I especially thought that, you know, PTSD, I don't know, unless she was homophobic the entire time and just never showed it, it kind of brought out different things from her that I would never imagine Smiles ever to have been, you know. It's, uh, it's I actually weird. did a bit of research on that, and there is there are people who get very violent with PTSD mm-hmm. to keep mm-hmm. themselves safe. Mm-hmm. So they just, you know, everyone justifies something their own way. So for her, it was to that Will had let her down and Anne made her feel safe. So Anne was allowing her to have a weapon to keep these prisoners away, to keep her safe. So that's <clears throat> that was playing over and over in my head, that it was all about keeping herself safe and keeping everyone around her safe. Well, I mean, I can imagine that she every day going to work would feel triggered and re-triggered and re-triggered. Yeah. I mean, She's still in the same place where it all happened. Surrounded by people who were there because and some could, of them were violent. Some, yeah. They could happen yeah. again. Yeah. Yes. So that's that's how I could justify that as an actor. But, man, that aspect, they are terrible. They are – I can't imagine how it would be to be hit by one of those. And – but my arm at the end of the day. I was going to just, you, just from wielding it. Do you all, you, you all do well, your own it stuff? It out, so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. ooh. <laughs> just doing it for a second hurts, yeah. See? I had to get oh, your... look at that muscle. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> do you all do your own stunts? I mean, I, you had to be in, in a few scenes that kind of required stunts, right? Yeah, I'm trying to think. Mostly I would do my own stunts. Not that I've had to do many um, this is a physical show. It's such a physical show. So we have an amazing stunt team. So you'll find a lot of, you know, Rita and Lou Kelly and, you know, those characters, the big fights, they will often have stunt people or, you know, will do their own stunts to a point. Um, <clears throat> I don't, I'm trying to think if I ever had a stunty. <laughs> I love you, Australians. Yeah, you put a it easy. It's and, and so like you <laughs> Our favorite is Sparky. Sparky, yeah. Sparky. Do any, anything with an I, E, or a Y at the end. So and we'll true. nickname everybody with Very an I, E, or Y. Lucky I'm already there. <laughs> so Me have, too. Have there ever been any storylines that you wished for Smiles that you kind of in your mind concocted for her? I would love to have seen her out. <laughs> You know, I'd love to see her at the pokies. Oh, right. (laughs) I'd love to. I'd love to have seen her get in a car and leave. You know, I'd love to see. She's always in the prison. I I have to ask you what the pokies are. Oh, poker, 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 of course. (laughs) Yeah, they're a big thing here. So they're my weakness at casinos, (laughs) Ah. poker machines. Well, that's that growing. They talk about the horses, but I always thought the pokies was probably poker machines was probably her thing because she could you Instant know have a few mm-hmm. and just do that, just, that. Kind of, just zone out. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, what were um, so I, you, in your backstory? You said she was married and stuff. Have you ever cast any of those roles of smiles? You know, characters <laughs> back, like um, her mother, her, her your mother, husband. yeah. Who would have been you know, your I've husband? Gi- I've given you a mother already once. Oh, that's right. Who was my mother? Jackie Weaver. All right. <laughs> Jackie was at our wedding. Well, you didn't you meet on this on a play with her or something? Yeah. So Ian and I met on a play called Silhouette. Mm-hmm. Terrible play. <laughs> <laughs> so many terrible. Well, plays. you got a husband yeah. out of it, so not so bad. Yes, that's right. I got a husband out of it, and Jackie was the lead in it. Um. And she's so naughty. I love her so much. Oh, I bet she yes, is. I'll have her as my mother any day. Um, no, I hadn't even thought about it. Who could play my husband? Um, unfortunately, my husband had already played Detective Collins. Exactly. So he can't have right. <laughs> I know. I have to, I'll get back to you on that one. All I right. Think. Good, All good. Right. We'll take a rain check. And I know that the show is not going anywhere after this season, and maybe you can't answer this because we don't know what happened in the last season, but what do you imagine for Smiles in the future after Wentworth is over. 
What's going to happen to her? Although we, that may have been determined. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yep. I, yeah, I think it's probably best I don't know. Okay. Um, gotcha. Let's just say let's hope it's positive. <laughs> okay, listen, we hope it's positive. We're, we're rather fond of, my, of us, yeah, Miles. We yeah. wanted to. We want her to succeed, in even life. when we she's awful. To be happy. You know, I don't know. I mean, again, it might might completely not jive with the actual background, but I always had a. I, I have a soft spot for Smiles, so I always think of her as somebody again who who kind of got into the prison guard role because she had to, but that she doesn't want to think that badly about humanity, but that the role she is in. You know, it's hard not to when, when that's when you're surrounded with every day. So I think of her as having right. a good heart. In Series 7, they actually gave her just probably two moments like that. There was one where um, uh, Radi, um, where they wanted information or something and, and Smile said, oh, and she said, I'll pay you. And, and Smile said, oh, don't worry about it. That's right. Right. You know, that's such a tiny little moment. But for me, that was like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's that's yeah. her saying, you know. Not everything is about money. I have humanity yeah. too. Yeah. And I'd love to have seen more of those moments where you could see just that little, especially I think in Series 7 there were, that was the time when there was opportunity for that, but also because we thought we were shooting the very last series. Mm -hmm. there was, And there's so many actors in this this show. So that's why, you know, you really can't bang on about um not having enough sometimes when you look around at all the the characters that they have to write for and um so I would just take anything I could get <laughs> and yeah. bring it bring it out dry. Well that that gives you good challenges. It yes, it keeps you so. on your toes and uh it's it's been a great uh constant gig. So you yeah. know you you're right to have said okay I'll, I'll do what I can with what I get and I'll stick yeah. with it because first of all uh, you, you're on like one of the primo shows in in the world yeah practically so yeah. see I already have like three questions in my head just because of the all right go ask, <laughs> ask away <laughs> well the first thing I wanted because I'll forget all of them um was there anything ever throughout the all the years that you said I, I have to talk to them about this I can't do this or on the contrary like I, they, I've got to do this I have to talk to the writers they have to was there anything that you want went to the writers with like a really strong feeling of this yeah, is what you to do or yeah <laughs> the only time I went into the writers room was um after that scene with Reb um that was the only time I went I, I can't do this I can't after all this time with this character that I love I can't perform violent acts without any backstory to it. Oh, they had oh because sense. it wasn't you 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 weren't aware yet of where it was going entirely. You, you had no idea. I knew that she had PTSD. They told me that she had PTSD, but I was really worried that we were going to film this season without you, the audience, yes. knowing she had just PTSD. have to be internalized. There's only so much I can do without <laughs> it being written. You know? yeah, yeah. Sure, there's a whole whole party going on in my head, but. You know. <laughs> Um, so that was the that was the only time, and it was quite weird because everyone else was always in the writers' room, and I was like, you know, just very cautiously walking in, not not, um, you know, it was like this whole world. Um, the, but that was the only time I went, no, nah, I I can't, I can't go forward without having a conversation about this. Yeah, but and yeah, they justified it for you. Yes, yeah. And Mars did say anytime, you know, just come and chat anytime you've got an issue. And now you told me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> eight, eight seasons in, now you tell me. Now, now I'm curious, in your mind, because I know we, we didn't actually see it, I think I would have figured it out if we had seen it. Um, did Linda have a favorite prisoner? Did, did, was somebody there she actually really liked in a kind of a secret way that maybe she wouldn't reveal, but... I think she always had a – Boomer made her laugh. I know that Bo, Boomer amused her. <laughs> um, there was something weird with Nicole uh, way back when. There was a kind of a – it was one of the writers said something like that, that her and Frankie may have even grown up near each other or something. Not that they knew each other, but there was something – a similarity about them um, and a toughness that they both had. Um, 
I don't think there's any other prisoners because it's hard because I actually like all the actual actors. So of I've course. got to get that away. Um, <clears throat> that's probably. I don't think she liked um, B. I think B challenged her too much. Um, Did you have a crush on anybody? Think about it. Did you have a crush on anybody? (laughs) Did she have a crush on anyone? I I still wonder if she had a bit of a crush on Anne in in the (laughs) eighties. It seems possible. <laughs> she really liked just, Anne. She was so vulnerable, and Anne made her feel safe. Yeah. Um, did she have a crush on him? I think. Oh, Bridget. I think she always. I think she always dug Bridget. I could yeah. actually see her and Bridget. She going and everybody out else. You drink. <laughs> <laughs> but also, I love Libby. So. Um, yeah, Br- but Bridget I could see that. Yeah, Bridget made everybody feel safe and good. Yeah. I, that's what happens when you play a psychologist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And uh, who was who has been your favorite scene buddy? My favorite scene buddy. Hmm. Sorry, I have to think. <laughs> um, actually, I loved the the scene where um the sex worker died. I I, I hardly ever got a chance to work with seals, but I loved it. Um, Celia. Um. The sex worker? Yes. Remember? Um, you mean the one who came? Where the sex worker died um, and Seals and I just had that scene where we're dealing with the dead body. I actually really enjoyed that. And I actually, <laughs> hmm. What does that say about always it? Enjoy, always enjoy working with Pam or Kate. Um, oh, well, I'm sure. Yes. Uh, and also I enjoyed working with Rick Donald in Series 7. Mm-hmm. Um, we had some fun stuff together. That's all I can remember at the top of my head. So did you always want to be an actor? Yes, always. Apparently yeah. the, even since uh, the age of four. Wow. Never thought of any. Oh, one, once I wanted to be, um, they called them air hostesses then because my dad worked for the airlines, and I said to my dad I wanted to be an air hostess, and he said, Jacqueline, if you ever try, you will, I'll make sure you never get a job. <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> Fine, Dad, I'll why. just be an actress. Yes. What could was thrilled. go wrong? I'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> so I went straight from grade 12, which is finishing high school, mm-hmm. To university, no one could believe it because I did so badly. I would only do English and speech and drama. So I went to university, had to leave home at 16 and went to drama school and graduated at 19. So I've been doing this a long, long time. (laughs) Well, it's great. You know, it's a small industry in Australia and you've, you know, you've managed to make a a good career for yourself. Um, Yeah. You did a, a one woman show that you wrote and starred in. Uh, what, what? What? Tell us about that. God, that was a long time ago. It was called, and I'm so naive. It was called Dangerous When Wet. I like oh, that. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's like, but I never even thought about that. It was an it was an old movie. I was really into old movie stars, and she was Lolita Latouche. Um, <laughs> I love it. That's a great name. Called Harvey, and they all died involving chickens. There was Harvey Nice Day, <laughs> Harvey Davidson, Harvey Nagila. Uh, <laughs> it was a comedy, I take it. Very much so, and a musical <laughs> comedy. So it was all sort of, it was a cabaret, I guess, all cabaret songs. So you sing. And she was kind of like Monroe, but not quite. Um, but, yeah, that was uh, that was so much fun. So a lot of, I think the reason I've been able to survive in this profession for so long is I do... So I was a musical theatre girl. I was a comedy person. Um, I, I've sort of done a tour doing being a singer in a group called the Harlets, which was a 60s cabaret. Um, you know, I've done, I, I sort of have extracted, extracted everything I can do out of this profession. And I do a lot of animation and um, voiceovers. So yes. Oh, yes. I just, just keep juggling. Well, that's great that you have all those skills because that's the way to stay alive in this business. Very much so. Well, are you yeah. are you enjoying this kind of diverse career, or if if you if you had your choice, you would choose one that you love the most? No, I like diversity. I'm definitely ready for a comedy. So I'm actually I've been writing something for years that I'm finally getting to the end of, which is a six part comedy 
that I can extend. Um, but I, yeah, I'm really ready for a comedy. I can imagine. <laughs> uh, I just need to get out of the heaviness for a little while. <clears throat> it's, but it's like the heaviness comes along. I'll do it. <laughs> it's like eating meat and potatoes for every meal for eight years and saying it's time for dessert. Well, actually, though, yeah. I mean, e even in Wentworth, you were the source of comedy. I mean, <clears throat> you know, dark comedy, but comedy. You were always that little, you know, the little joke that we got in between. All you need to do was glance at somebody with your skin. And I hear that you've always been oftentimes cast for these snarky kind of sassy roles. Where did that come from? <laughs> it's happened as I've got older. So I used to get more um, dumb blondy kind of, you know, ingenue characters. And then as I've got older, it's become sort of your dry sense of humour that or a bit more salt of the earth characters. Um, I don't know where it's come from. I guess it's just the evolution of a career. You know, yes. people see, see you a certain way. Um, well, you project something. Well, and you're good at you it. Project, you project a sassiness. I mean, if, if, if anything, we know... God, these planes. I know. If anything, we know that you can do a lot with one-liners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but well, there's a... You. It's always got to come from somewhere. You don't just drop it. Of mm -hmm. course. Well, and you can feel that. I mean, you know, there's so much you can feel when you hit that one liner that so much happened before that. You know, it didn't just yeah. happen in a vacuum. It's got to um, come from. But I mean, when when we look at your IMDb page, there's so much on it. But then, how did Wentworth change your life, if it did? It certainly changed my life. I have been a jobbing actor all of my life. Um, <clears throat> it's certainly. Um, I suppose, change my profile a bit. I'm a, more well-known than I used to be. Um, uh, it hasn't necessarily, it has made for a bit more, um, what's the word, um, people are a bit more familiar with who I am. So mm -hmm. I, occasionally I'll get, I'll get an offer as opposed to having to audition. Um, <clears throat> I've learnt so much. I have learnt so much as an actor in those eight years. Um, you know, just watching some of those actresses and actors, um, being able to work with different directors, so many different directors in that amount of time. And sometimes I think it was an advantage not doing a lot early on. So I could just sit back and watch. I would, I, I would quite often just go and sit by, you know, the split and watch people working, you know, instead of sitting in the green room having coffee. I'd love to just see what people were doing. So I think it's made me a better actor. Definitely. Kind of like a master class. Very much so. How lucky am I? Yeah. <laughs> you know, sitting, you know, watching Pam Ray. Man. Far out. That okay. scene, I'll never forget that kangaroo court scene. She was the one outside where she was hung. Oh, she yes. Was, Incredible, absolutely incredible. It was it was breathtaking. Yes, I, I bet Sigrid was a lot of fun to play with too. Yes, yeah, she was great to watch too. I love Siggy. Um, Siggy also um, Kate Box, mm -hmm. fabulous actress. Oh. She's an absolute force. You just hear action and just watch her and go, oh my god. She's incredible and also a great chick. I love her. Um, well, oh, Celia, that scene. Oh, Celia and um, Katrina, the death scene. That was yeah. incredible. That was such a privilege to be in that room. And just that when Boomer was killing her, suffocating her, and just watching that one tear go down Celia's cheek. It was oh. like, oh, heart wrenching. You know, wow, how, how lucky. Yeah, it's an excellent show. I mean, you know, it, it's it's not for no reason that it has fans, legions all over the world, of fans, mm. and which so I'm sure you've dedicated. encountered. <laughs> I think I'm going to the UK in March. I hope so for one of the Star Screen. Star. Yeah, it's been a hope. I mean, will. yeah, let's hope the pandemic will. Yeah, because who knows what's going to happen? I mean, God. <laughs> now, if and also. I don't want to quarantine for two weeks. That would be the other thing. That well, I hope much. that by March we don't have to do that. <clears throat> Gosh. Me too. 
Now, if you if you weren't playing Linda, which other character on the show would you have liked to play? Oh, gosh. It's hard because I like Linda, but I'd like her to have had more. <laughs> Probably a prisoner. Probably um, Siggy's, oh, why can't I think of the name? <clears throat> um, Sonia. Sonia. Ah, oh, yes. Sonia is a great character. You could have fun with Sonia. Very much so. Yeah, no, I think Sonia, that's who I'd like to play. You would have been great in that role. And Although I can only see Sigrid right now. Yeah, me too. Oh, but that she's, would have been fun. she's tiny, but she's sure. Mighty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there was always something going on there. Always. I thought they just, <laughs> I think they dispatched with her yeah. rather unceremoniously. Died, that was it, moving on. Welcome to Wentworth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next. Well, so far, Linda's evaded that. So far. So far. We'll see what happens. <laughs> we're, we're not going to make you say anything. Um, who would be your dream actor or actress to work with? Now that you're a, an international star and you can have your pick. And you've worked with the, some of the best already. Um, <clears throat> I'd love to work with Tina Fey and Amy Poehler. I'd love oh. to do a comedy with those women. I Proud. just think it's so much fun. They're the best of the best. My daughter's actually reading Tina Fey's um, autobiography at the moment. Pants. That's why it's on my mind. Um, who else? Who? God, I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> I actually want to be in Call My Agent. I've been watching Call My Agent. Have you watched that? No, we that's a yet. French series, right? You have not watched it? No. Yet. It's a French. Okay. I've found you our next show. Awesome. You got it. Our next binge. <clears throat> it's great. Um, I just love it. And you, I know with subtitles, you know, people say that. It's one of the – I just completely forget I'm reading subtitles. We watch no, so we, much foreign yeah. uh, stuff. I don't even think about them unless I can't read, unless they're hard to read for some reason. But. Yeah, but this one in particular is even easier for some reason. Okay. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I don't even know where to begin. Um, yes, that, that, let's give me a comedy. Let's go Tina Fey, Amy Poehler. All right. That works for us. Here, let, Tina? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and who is your role model or who did you grow up you know, wanting to be like or, or now? My role model when I was at uni um, were, role models were Madeline Kahn and Maggie Smith. That's well, pretty well, good. That's, that's a pretty good duo there. Yeah. You can't I'd be get... really happy, happy to have Madeline Kahn's career. I would be happy to be in all those Mel Brooks films <laughs> and Young Frankenstein and... I know I should say something dramatic. No, but they no, were, no. Comedy was definitely, you know, even though I, even then I was getting cast in a lot of the dramatic stuff, but the Madeline Kahn's choices <clears throat> and Maggie Smith in Murder by Death and they're both my geniuses. Smith in Way of the World. In between my second year and third year of drama school, I went to London and I saw Maggie Smith in Way of the World. And we were right up in the gods and she was this tiny, 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 tiny little dot. And I think she was playing like an 18-year-old and she would have been, I don't know, 50 or 40 or something. And she was so brilliant. I've she, never forgotten that. She's um, a, she's amazing. She's oh. a, The first time I ever saw her was in a, a strange little movie starring Anne Bancroft called The Pumpkin Eater. Did you ever see oh, that? I have that one. Oh, yes, oh, I have. Okay. You had that one because I have that one for you to watch. <laughs> The Pumpkin Eater. It's the, it's the first thing I ever saw her, and she's quite, she's quite young. She plays a character named Phil Pot. Uh, you should look for it. Uh, Anne Bancroft, cool. Peter. Um, oh, can't think of it right now. My brain just went dead. Uh, and uh, Maggie Smith. Interesting film. She's the queen of the one-liners. So she, she could drop. And I think maybe that, actually, now that I think about it, Maybe she really has influenced me in that mm -hmm. way. There was the movie Murder by Death. There's this bit where they all drop dead or something or someone drops dead and, and she says, and they say it's a salmon. And she says, darling, you didn't, darling, you didn't use canned salmon, did you? <laughs> <laughs> it's all so dull and dry. Everything. I mean, the, the, the dowager in Abbey. Downton Abbey, every line she said was, was a punchline, was a, a drop dead droll line. Yes, yeah. I reckon now that I think about it, now we know. She definitely influenced me. 
So there's yeah. a little bit of Maggie Smith and Lena Smiles. Very good. <laughs> I never thought about that. There you go. There you go. Things you'll find out. We got it. Course. Now, <laughs> you said at some point that musical theater, that you started off singing. So mm -hmm. I have to ask, because we're huge musical theater fans. Your absolute favorite musical? Little Shop of Horrors. Really? Oh, I've I saw that. All my life I've wanted to be Audrey. But I would you I would sing that song as an audition song, but because Suddenly I have more. a deep voice, I would always have to transpose it. <laughs> and I remember doing I knew I'd done a really good audition for I think it was David Atkins and a friend of mine, Deb, was casting and and I said, you know, what well, what did they think? She said they really liked you, but I knew she you know, I couldn't sing that high. And that was always the hard thing for me that I was an alto and most musical theatre leads are Soprano, sopranos mm -hmm. and mezzo sopranos. Yeah. So you could do yeah. Rizzo and Greece. Oh she can do a I, lot of things. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I need what, to find one now, I think, that for this age. So I'll have to investigate what's out there. Okay. What have you I'm done? What roles you're have writing you done? real estate the musical, so what what have you real done? Real estate then? the musical? Yeah. Real estate the musical? Are you <laughs> writing that one? Uh, a friend of mine, the one who I'm writing my series with, and I've been talking about. It, I just think real estate is pure comedy. Well, when you watch the uh, those shows, uh, which we you watch, watch all the time, Hunter. House Hunters and House Hunters International, I think realtors must go home and just drink a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a song. I talked to Elise, my friend who I'm writing with, uh, called Water Glimpses, because in Sydney, where I used to live, I always just talk about water glimpses, and I thought you could do it on top of like a ladder and a platform and you know they because you'd have to go up you know three ladders to be able to see the bit yeah, of the peak of the peak of the view and say what peak of view you have to watch a certain <laughs> angle and it's over there yeah, and the distance the left. now i'll hold your foot you right now there was a broadway <laughs> show called six rooms rib view six rooms river view it's and it was i actually auditioned for that when i was young i almost Got a very small part in it, uh, but anyway, you had to. They had you had them hanging out of a window, literally <laughs> looking that way, and there was the rib, the Hudson River view. You know, <laughs> it's, good. it's just comedy, isn't it? Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> it is. So now you um, you do a lot of voices, as you mentioned. That's a whole other career that you have. And what, mm -hmm. how, is it harder to prepare for a role when you're just doing the voice or when you're on screen? Uh, oh, I think one of the greatest joys in life is providing voices for animation. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It is so much fun. Just because there's, you get to go to work in your PJs? <laughs> there's that. <laughs> oh, my my um, leisure wear. Yeah, I always wear my leisure wear so I can, and it's full overacting so and I love it's like being a kid mm -hmm. so did you ever there's a, a series on um called She's Owl I don't know if you've ever seen that it's the I've most it. wonderful kid series written by Obi Wade Obi Wade Obi um and his characters he was a fan of Bewitched and his writing is so good and then so you'd look at the you look at the way the character is drawn, so it might have buck teeth or something. Mm -hmm. So you get to do kind of a bit of a buck teeth. And it, I don't know, it's just it's literally like being a six-year-old kid and playing dress-up. <laughs> um, and you get to do all the different accents. Um, in She's Ow, I was often doing, uh, you know, the New York, honey, we're having cold cuts. Um, I don't know, it's, it's just, it's really fun. Do you have so, to have a... Like an ex, do you have to have a dialect coach for all these things, or do you just listen to some old movies or whatever? And no, I just I I also think if you're a musical person, you pick up accents mm -hmm. very much so. Easily. Um, and my dad was English, so yeah, you know, English accents and American accents I usually find quite easy. Um, but yeah, it's, it's the, seriously, and Ian does it a lot with me as well. So we both did Cuckoo Harajuku, which is produced by Gwen Stefani. That was oh. both fun. We were pretty much everyone evil in that. Fun. <laughs> um, yeah, and I've just done one called Big Words, Small Stories, and it yeah, did so many different characters, and you learn how to pitch them differently so that mm -hmm. they, you know, you can't recognise the same person doing the same voices. Um, do all different ages. 
you know, you get to do, you know. Well, you, you, did the whole, you did everybody? I did um, 10 characters, I think. In wow. The yeah. It's, yeah, it's so much fun. Well, but, gosh, uh, yeah, I'd be happy to do that for the rest of my life. We had some questions for you, but it's, no, I think we should go. Yeah, for but they're sort of easy uh, compared to all the things. <laughs> yeah. We want to ask you a few. Uh, well, we thought we'd uh, give you a chance to do just because we know you do commercials bit. also and Cartoon, and, and voiceovers and stuff. And uh, we thought we'd ask you some maybe some uh, food questions, and you could answer them in different voices. So we'll tell you what voice to do. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, you're supposed to okay. be. Morning, monkey. Uh, oh, these, these, these are easy. These are easy compared, compared to what you do. So, um, in in a very sexy selling lingerie, come, actually, actually, Jessica heard, Rabbit, I've come heard hither, you're doing kind sexy, of voice. Se just selling cars, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you have to do sexy for everything. Here's the question for that: What would you eat if it were your last meal? If I was to eat my last meal, it would be oysters. And champagne. Oh, would it really be though, or was it the voice answering? <laughs> no, I seafood for me, definitely. Got it. A platter with prawns and oysters. Mm, sounds good to me too. Okay, so a, a wacky cartoon voice. Uh, sure. Any one that you like, uh, or sure. need to do it. Uh, what food would you rather starve than eat? Mm. Awful. What? I eat awful. Brains, awful. Oh, awful. <laughs> <laughs> what else? What else? Um, I don't know. Um, I, anything from the inside of an animal. Uh, definitely. Got it. <laughs> All right. A this, this is going to be hard. A, this is a hard one. A serial okay. killer. What do you cook best? <laughs> <laughs> What I cook best <laughs> is uh, I make my own pasta. You, from scratch? From scratch. Oh. From human remains? <laughs> from human oh, no. remains. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's here's just a very easy one. Or not. Or maybe, maybe not. Just, just a going. wife and mother. What's the strangest thing you ever ate? The strangest thing I ever ate was buffalo. Mm -hmm. At least not the insides of a buffalo. No, not the insides. <laughs> it was tough, it was, right? It was really tough. tough. Yeah. 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 Right. Okay, well, that's well, all. Thank you for playing. Yeah, but I wish we had more now because I could do this all night. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite character to play uh, voice for? Um, oh, in She's Al. There was a superhero character called Tara. And Tara was like really successful a long time ago. <laughs> and she was really annoying. Um, I love doing her. I um, think I know her. <laughs> I think we all do. Um, can't even remember now. That's that's probably the most. Yeah. I love oh. Sheila the computer in She's Out. She was the she's lit the lips in She's Out. My kids always say with their friends if they say Mum's an actor and and they say what's she done and I go Wentworth and I go I oh, don't know it and then they say She's Out they all go Oh my God your mum was Sheila in She's Out. <laughs> we'll have to look for it. Yeah, we'll definitely look I, for it. It's really fun. It got banned by Mums of America. Or they were. Well, that's a good sign. Lucky time. you. That's a really good sign. I know, because it was a boy who found um, a mum, they're moving to the auntie's house. He puts on a ring in the basement and turns into the auntie's superhero character, She's Out. So it was a boy dressed in female clothing. <sighs> These people. Wow. These so people. So it was supposed to go to series two and it never got, it didn't get picked up because they Because the Americans. Against. Yeah, it's you'll. It's great. It's how, one of my favorites. How's it time. spelled, Jackie? S H E Z O W. Oh, okay. See, and here I was going to ask you if there's She's any out. temptation oh, yeah. to come to the U.S. and try to work here, but from all these stories, it doesn't sound like there should be any appeal in coming to the U.S. <laughs> I I would love to come to the states and where I would wait for the kids to go you know to be on their own mm -hmm. you know be able to look after themselves or um but yeah eventually we might dip our toe in 
You know, there's an Aussie in every show here. Every show yeah. or, or yeah. two, you know. Yeah, and we know most of them. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay, well, we'll, we'll be waiting. Um, what are you, are you working on something now? Are you, do you know what you have coming next after the pandemic or I mean, besides I, actually you're writing a show? But. Can you say? Yeah. Oh, look, I, well, I've lost two jobs because of the pandemic. So oh. I just um, lost a film. Eh. Um, and I was supposed to do a series in Alice Springs, but unfortunately that, yeah, so it's been a bit tough in our industry at the moment. Are those things that are um, never going to, I mean, are they going to be picked up later on or did they just? The film got made. So we were in lockdown. Sydney wasn't in lockdown. Oh. I'd signed, was ready to go. Um, I was just scared, scared I wouldn't get back. You know, the, uh, um, yeah. there was just too much at stake. So I had to let that one go. And the other one, they went with somebody already quarantining in Alice Springs. So it's wow. just the way it is. But we've set up a studio here, so we've been able to do um, voiceovers. So thank God for voiceovers. Um, and I just um, auditioned for another anim animated series. So hopefully that goes ahead. And I'd like a comedy. Yeah. So lockdown, okay, everybody, least, listen At least listen during up. lockdown you were able to finish your comedy. Did you pat it? At least during lockdown, you were able to finish your comedy that you've been yes. working on for a long time, right? Yeah. And you're going to shop it around and uh, do you want to star in it? Um, no. No. Um, I want to be in it, but um, I'm. we actually, the girl I'm writing with, we both discussed that about getting older in this profession where you suddenly go, I actually don't need to be the lead in this. I just want to get this out there. Mm-hmm. And I don't think there's anything like it out there. So, yeah. All right. And all, obviously I've made some very good contacts through Wentworth, so hopefully someone will pick it up. Well, it's exciting. Gonna, well, we're going to ask, it's not the same thing, but we're going to ask you if you've taken a, from the show, if you've taken Friends for Life. Oh, absolutely. Celia calls me, I reckon, at least three times a week. Oh, I love it. Say hi. Uh, yes. <laughs> Yeah, Tell her we, we miss her all the time. <laughs> We've got kids same age. Um, no, we just get on really well. Jane Hall, I spoke, spoke to her last night. Um, Kate Atkinson is, you know, always here for a Barbie and a swim. Can't get rid of her. <laughs> um, oh, pretty much all of them. If they're That's in good. Melbourne, you know, I often have little soirees here. So I've definitely made lifelong friends without That's a great. doubt. That's nice. And That's directors as well. They and all seem like you, great people. And hopefully you'll work with them again because it's kind of what we love about the Australian industry is that it's almost like a repertory company. You know, we see so many of the people that we love in all the shows that we mm -hmm. watch. Yeah, the Brits are yes, like that too. It's quite a small group. And at the moment, everyone's here. So it's like even all your international actors, everyone is here. Oh, so. I know. Nicole is there. and I know. <laughs> <laughs> Have so you been watched? Uh, you been watching Nine uh, Perfect any, Stranger? Yeah, I've oh, watched oh, two. Yes. It's fabulous. We, we saw we saw six, six, uh, six on six. the press site. Yeah, we get them uh, all okay. earlier. Yes, we so. watched two last night. It's fantastic, oh, it's so isn't it? Yeah. So it's good. really good. And it was shot in Australia. Did we see, there's one with um, Susie Porter that's really fun. It was on SBS. I'm, sorry, I'm just trying to think what it was. Was it a movie? Or a show? No, it's just a six-part series. Oh, we're going to have to check it I'll out. I'll email it to you. I can't remember. Oh, yeah, because we love Susie. We love all things. Yeah, we we love so all things sweet. Aussie. Is we love all of you. Is it that not all of it gets to us, so we sometimes we manage to get it other, you know, in other ways, but uh, we we yeah. <laughs> we love our Aussie shows. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, we're excited yeah. that uh, Pack to the Rafters is coming back. Yeah. Uh, Next yes. month, that's yeah. gonna be fun. We love Rebecca. My old headshot. People used to think it was Rebecca Gibney for some I can reason. See that. That's not bad. I can yeah. see that. Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm very, very happy. She's gorgeous. <laughs> She's, She's darling. Gorgeous. <laughs> oh yes. Um, what during all these crazy times of the fires and the global pandemic and the I mean it's it's insane. We're it's having insane. a hurricane in it's ten a, minutes. Yeah, exactly. Thank oh you for gosh. distracting us. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we spend the day tying everything down and oh um, go. yeah but, but we're hoping it's gonna be we prepare so that we're prepared so that it's not as bad as they say hopefully 
I've seen Wizard of Oz. I know what happens. <laughs> that's a tornado. That's a cyclone. That's a no, tornado. that's different. <laughs> we don't, thank God, get tornadoes on the island. Except we did have two warnings we in the last two We had two warnings. Years. I've been here I 20, mean, yeah. you know, climate is going nuts. You need flat land for yes. tornadoes. Wow. Kansas. Um, Kansas, yes. We're far away from Kansas yes. and plan to stay that way. Uh, <laughs> what has been your, has there any, has there been anything that you realized you've always wanted to do, but put off or that if you could do anything, you know, it's kind of like a time for reflection. I guess a lot of people, you know, their priorities change. What, what has it been like for you in that rega- regard? Do you mean career wise or just life? Life. Anything. Anything. Life. I, I like reinventing myself all the time. So I, which is a bugger about for me, I wanted to do that film because I haven't done a lot of film. Um, I think what this pandemic has actually brought is a sense of how important the people in your life are around you, um, how much I miss my buddies. Um, uh, I think it's also brought out don't wait for things to happen. Try and make them happen yourself. Don't wait for the phone to ring. Um Buy that more expensive bottle of wine because you never know what will happen next. <laughs> it might be your last. last. <laughs> it might be your last. <laughs> um, I think, and also it's brought us quite close as a family because the kids are here all the time. Like we eat breakfast, lunch and dinner together. Um, Bailey, my daughter and I work out every morning together. Um, you know, it's it's definitely almost brought an old-fashioned sense of family mm-hmm. together because we're not all distracted and out and about. We've had to just learn to live together. together. Um, so I think there are a lot of good things to take out of this yeah. and and just people, just, you know, appreciate the people in your lives. Definitely. Definitely. Good takeaways. So, no, I, I, oh, you want to do something? Wait, one more before my, my, my yes. it's always my Because last I'm just curious, um, since, you know, the fans have loved Linda from the very, very first, I mean, I think I loved her from the very first so moment. Uh, she's always been, as you said, that constant, you can always rely on her for a good laugh, for, you know. And I was just wondering, what would, what, do, what does Linda want to say to her fans at the end of this run? What would she want to say? I think she'd want to say thanks for sticking with me through eight, no, nine series or eight, yeah, eight series. And that maybe we should have a spin off. I think she should have a spin off. <laughs> I like that. Uh, we certainly <laughs> would love it for Over the pokies. Yeah, the pokies. <laughs> yeah. Well, no. As soon as you finish working on your six uh, episode uh, series, yeah, <laughs> and then the musical, exactly. Smiles the music. Oh no no the, the first, musical. No no no. I like that one. <laughs> It'd all be very deep voice. We're the all deep voice. there for it. Oh yeah. I, I'm I'm not, I haven't got to play a drag queen. I think you'd be great as a drag queen. <laughs> I would be a great drag queen. It would darling. be a little controversial. Except today now, now yes. you know, you can't, you can't, only a drag queen can play a drag queen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can still play Maybe in drag. Except... <laughs> I would. <laughs> okay, so here, our, our there we go. Our question, final question sort of works into that. Which we always like to ask if, at the end. If you were queen. For a day. For a day. Or, yes, yes what would be your first <laughs> order of business? <laughs> Ooh. Mm, my first order of business. Well, first of all, I'd get everyone out of Afghanistan that needs to get out of Af- oh, Afghanistan, thank but you. we won't go there right now. No, no. Uh, mm. My no. first order of business would be acceptance from everybody of everybody. Nah. No judgment um, and kindness. Let's all look out for each other. Let's not just look out for ourselves and let's give back. Well, you can be queen. Yes, you can be queen. You can be queen. In our world. In our world, okay? (laughs) Okay, thank you. That's a very good order of business. This has been fantastic. You are wonderful and we love you. You are both wonderful. And I'm so glad that we finally got to have our chat. Good. Thank you for sticking with us. (laughs) Absolute pleasure. And um, let's hope we get through this thing. We'll talk uh, next gig. 
Yes. Uh, we're we're here, we right? Do, uh, and thanks to the the, the World Wide Webs. <laughs> I'm I'm almost seventy five, so I always make jokes about those things. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> it's pretty good for seventy five. Well, let me tell you. I've got a young life; it helps. Um, I'm already forty, so I'm getting too old for her. <laughs> but it, replace me with a new shiny toy. But I, we'll we'll always be happy to talk to you, Jackie. Always, and keep up with everything you're doing. Yeah, we're, we're, we're you're love great. You. Yes. Oh, thank you so much. And I'll um, email you the name of the um, show with Susie. I'll, I'm oh, great. To Terrific. Would love and we're going to go and look for a shizu. And my agent. You'll love it. Oh, yeah. yes. I, I've been eager to watch it, actually. No, yeah. no, I know. We have absolutely. Before all of our, we watch of our so shows much. come back in September. But we we're, watch we're drama queens. So <laughs> it's hard. Aren't we all dear? Oh, dear. <laughs> yes, my darling. So <laughs> thank you so much. Right. Stay safe. Stay love. healthy. Stay safe and healthy. And uh, break a leg with everything. You too. And hold on. There's a hurricane coming. Yes. (laughs) Bye. Bye. Bye.